What's happening, my friends, my family, Silent Mike, back with another check, fix, clean up, free coaching, clean your technique up. This is a series where I take your guys as subscribers, followers on Instagram, my family, and help you out with your form. If you want to get involved, I need a landscape video, preferably two different angles, 70% for sets of three. Send it to ask, M-I-K-K-E at gmail.com. That's askmike with two Ks at gmail.com for a submission and maybe you'll get chosen. If you guys are new, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and let's get after it. Uh, my man here, um, deadlift form is actually pretty dang decent. Uh, one thing obviously right off the bat I would say is that uh, you need a little bit flatter shoe. Um, many basketball shoes, running shoes, things of that nature are made to kind of absorb cushion. They have a ton of padding, so when under load, uh, you cannot feel the ground as much as we would like. So you want a flat shoe. Um, barefoot is fine besides the obvious dangers of dropping shit on there, which does happen, and you can get um, injured. I, even with a shoe on, crushed a toe. So now my second toe on my left foot almost looks like a thumb. Uh, by dropping a 25-pound plate uh, from about eye level straight down on that sucker. So uh, even with shoes, it can be dangerous. Without a shoe, it can be very dangerous. But a flat shoe would be best. Uh, and overall, your form, I would say, from this angle, looks really, really good. Uh, on the way down, uh, your knees are pushing forward a little bit too much. Uh, you need that chest to fall forward. If you're going to control that eccentric, we want a little smoother way uh, down. You want to hinge at your hips first, letting your chest drop just slightly. Uh, but on the way up from that angle, it looked awesome. Uh, I can already tell from this angle as well, the flatter shoes will help a lot and feel great. Um, hip position is pretty dang solid. Uh, the, the, the one little nitpicky piece, we could probably flex those lats a little bit harder. Um, so not only do you want to pull them into your body, but you want your shoulders to be as far away from your ears as possible. We want our shoulders to be as far away from our ears as possible, so forcing them down. Uh, one thing that will help is bending that bar around your shins. Another thing that will help is trying to get your elbows pointed backwards. So you torque that bar, you're bending that bar with your arms around your legs, forcing it backwards. Um, again, no need. I am a, a fan of a, a, of a shorter um, range of motion when possible. Um, so a closer stance may help with that. Um, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with your stance right now. Uh, again, the only thing I would suggest is flat shoes will feel amazing over time. You'll be able to really dig your uh, big toe, your pinky toe, your heel, everything into the ground nice and firmly. Um, you're keeping the bar close to you, which is actually very, very good. Uh, but I think it's because you do have a little bit of a shorter torso and longer arms, uh, which just kind of puts you in advantage to pull. Uh, but flexing your lats getting your shoulders far away from your ears, covering your armpits with your shoulders, whatever cue might work for you, bending that bar around your shins. Uh, the tighter we can get those lats, not only obviously will we build them, um, but the tighter overall we could be uh, in our pull, and it will feel so much lighter over time. People talk about getting tight. What does that mean? Majority of the time it means our breathing and bracing, again, pushing into that belt. I think about breathing underneath the belt, so the lower part of my stomach, under the belt in the front, sides, and low back, pushing out into it and really holding my breath in my stomach, not my chest, and then flexing your lats as much as you can. Uh, it's slightly different in each lift. Uh, for this one, it's pulling it into yourself again. So uh, really solid work, pretty dang good deadlift. On to our next gentleman, uh, moving into some straps. Again, if you're competing in powerlifting, I typically say – Unless you already uh, are fairly advanced and know what the heck you're doing, I would say avoid straps. It looks like you have some kind of cross-training shoe on. Um, it's fairly flat, but the flatter the better, so I'd look into that. Um, and overall, looking pretty dang solid. Uh, a couple of these reps, it looks like your hips may sink a little bit too low, uh, and you're wiggling that head a little bit. But otherwise, it looks pretty dang good, my friend. Uh, again, those lats I think could be slightly tighter. You could see some space there. Basically, what you want to imagine is someone sticking their finger right there. Watch where your heads are going, you perverts. Sticking your finger right there in your armpit on the back trying to tickle you. Uh, and you're trying to cover that up with your shoulder, trying to block the tickle like a karate block with your shoulder over the armpit so you don't get tickled. Um, but it's not really karate and it's not really a block. But if you were to really cover right there, you can see in that tank talk loop, you're trying to bring your shoulder down to the bottom of that seam, if that makes sense. Again, shoulders far away from our, uh, excuse me, shoulders far away from our ears. Um, hopefully, I'll do a video on that soon and maybe uh, direct you guys a little bit uh, cleaner with, oh, we got a twofer. My man's trying to get a twofer here. He tried to sneak one in. Um, but actually, pretty dang good deadlift, dude. Uh, I do think that the, the flatter the shoe, the better. I know those shoes, and they're fairly flat. Um, but I do think, uh, you know, a wrestling shoe, 
uh, something really basic and flat will work, a boxing shoe, uh, a little bit better. One thing off the bat, too many steps and probably too big of steps. Uh, under maximal load, you won't be able to kind of lunge out that way. So you want to take two or three very efficient steps, just maybe one back, one out, one out, uh, or one back and out, one out uh, to get to your spot. Um, overall, from this angle, again, looks pretty good. Looks like you may have a hair of butt wink. It may be uh, your shorts. I did a pretty dang good video with Kelly Sturett uh, back in the day. If you guys just Google Silent Mike butt wink, check that out. Ways to fix it. Um, again, because you had to take those two big steps, you then had to uh, readjust and take smaller steps getting forward. And under heavier loads, one, that becomes dangerous. Two, it's just a waste of energy and time. We want to be most efficient we can with every single thing we do in the gym uh, because we're really trying to squeak out every pound we can. Uh, it looks from here, we'll be able to see in a second, but it looks like you might have a thumbless grip. Um, I know a lot of people are a big advocate of it, and there's not necessarily inherently wrong with it. Um, it can relieve some pressure on the elbows. Well, on the wrists, which lead to the elbows and the shoulders, you know, that's another common question we get all the time is how do we relieve stress on the elbows with a low bar position? Um, you know, the truth, the best answer is to build a bigger back or uh, figure out a way uh, to work around it because powerlifting kind of hurts. You know, deadlifting correctly, getting really tight, doing a lot of volume, it kind of hurts. Um, you got to figure out the difference between injury and hurt, um, but it does hurt. Benching, getting really tight, really freaking tight, over and over and over, it hurts. You know, wrists start to hurt, back starts to hurt, hips start to hurt. Uh, but it's just a, like, again, a part of the game. So thumbless grip, not a big deal, but I'm not the biggest fan. I think if possible, we should try to get our hand around the bar, squeeze the bar as tight as you can, and also pull it down and into us. So think about pulling those elbows forward slightly, but more down and bending that bar over our shoulders um, or our traps. Again, maybe even a slightly lower bar position might be more comfortable. Um, stance width looks pretty good. Knees actually look very, very solid where you have them. Um, breathing looks pretty dang solid. Eye position, everything else looks really, really good. But the tighter we can get our lats, the tighter we can get our midsection. And again, if we're trying to keep our hips to our shoulder as stable as possible, again, our hips to our shoulder as stable as possible, not let the weight move at all, and then we're allowed to push into the ground with everything we have. Uh, and the more stable it is, the more transfer of power from your legs, low back, into the bar you can have, better off we're going to be. So flexing those lats on top of the breathing and bracing, which already looks solid, uh, but overall, both, man, the squat and the deadlift, uh, very, very, very solid form. You may have a hair and an uneven squat. Uh, it's hard to tell, and not everybody's built even, so it's hard to fix. Uh, but some tempo squats, really taking your time, feeling it out, going back and forth, uh, or just spend a slight little bit of uh, extra mobility onto that right hip. And you know, guys, you know me, I don't talk a lot about mobility, but sometimes it is needed. Moving to some squats here. Again, we might have some a butt wink. And for those that don't know, basically butt wink just means our tailbone or our low back starts to curl forward um, at the bottom of the squat. And a lot of times that has to do with uh, lack of mobility in our hips, uh, in the hip flexors. Pulling our knee up with a flat back against a wall is kind of a way to tell. You should be able to pull that knee pretty close to your chest uh, on its own or with your hands uh, without that low back curling. And what causes this is tight hip flexors uh, among some other things. But Sitting at a desk for a very long time, uh, obviously having a flex position of the knee over and over and over. Is this a different gentleman? Same gentleman. Oh, man, we got to get back to that other guy. Uh, but that looks pretty dang good in terms of the squat. Uh, again, I would just try to uh, check the butt wink video out, fix it slightly. Um, my man right here looks very powerful, looks solid. It looks like you're a hair high. We're going to have to get a little bit deeper. And two ways I think we're going to do that. Um, one, I want you to try a slightly narrower stance. Uh, and everyone's going to be like, Mike, you hate that wide squat stance. I don't hate or neglect anything. But if you can't hit depth there, your, your hips just might not be able to take it. So I'd move that stance in. Uh, get those toes a little bit straighter. And then what I want you to do is push into your knees a little bit more. Right there you have a fairly vertical shin. Again, that's not right, wrong, or the other. Some people can get away with it. Um, but when you're lacking in depth and your chest is falling more and more forward throughout the rep, uh, a little bit of a lean in the squat with a lower bar position is okay. But if your chest collapses or falls more drastically, the degree uh, of tilt from your hip gets worse throughout the set, uh, we have issues. So um, narrower stance, knees more forward, pushing into your knees, almost that stance right there really, um, where you walk it out, maybe just an inch out from your walkout and forcing in your knees it also looks like you're a little uneven here. Knees caving out, feet are caving out, your heels are moving. We need those feet stable. Um, and I, I have a feeling that moving your stance in to where those knees are naturally going is going to fix it. So um, take this shot right here. Chick -chick. Screenshot that guy right there. And I want you to move your um, maybe your heels out an inch from that. 
uh, and try to squat there with some lighter weights for about four weeks to see how it feels. Again, with all these technique changes, guys, powerlifting, uh, among other things, but this sport, if you get a good cue or a good tip, you can see you're uneven there, man. You're going to get a lot of issues down the road. we got to fix this right freaking now. You're tilting to the left, the left knee's slamming in, uh, and that right knee's not doing a lot of work with the right leg. So uh, these tips and tricks will work over time, but you have to trust in them. You have to trust in me. You have to trust in the process. You have to trust in yourself. You have to trust in donuts, ice cream, and the powerlifting gods. Uh, and give it four to six weeks of practice with lighter weights and a little bit of volume. You know, Again, the submaximal 60 between 70%. Um, just doing it once, it won't feel good. And then you're going to go through it and say, oh, Mikey sucked. That didn't feel good at all. What the hell does he know what he's talking about? Um, Rather than give it a single chance, give it four to six weeks, and then if you still don't find progress, more comfortable, uh, a little bit more pain or a little bit stronger, or excuse me, a little less pain or a little stronger, then you can go back to your old ways. But give it a chance. Give me a chance. Give the powerlifting gods a chance. Give Ice Cream a chance. Uh, overall, pretty dang solid right here, my friend. Um, it looks like a higher bar position, which is fine for me. Uh, again, the guy before, uh, my friend that had the wobbly knee, let's try a lower bar position as well. Um, walkout seems pretty dang decent. Uh, breathing and bracing seems a little bit um, pretty dang decent, to be honest. Let's see as we're going here slow-mo. Take it with me again, guys. Please do your boy a favor. Give this a thumbs up, share it, subscribe. Scroll back to the beginning of the video. Watch this 30 times. I'm trying to help you guys as much as I can in as many ways as I can. Uh, but make it time efficient for all of us. Uh, this angle, it looks a hair high, but I think if we watched it from the side, it's not too bad. So again, guys, give me a side view and a front view if you can. Knees, everything looked pretty solid. With that higher bar position, I'd like to see you try to force your elbows not only together, but forward and under the bar slightly more. Um, you're leading pretty good with your hips here. Uh, I would try to lead with your knees a little bit more if you can. Last big rep, nice big breath. Push into those knees. Overall, pretty dang solid squat, but out of the hole, we need to keep that chin tucked, elbows forward and back. Appreciate you guys. Silent Mike, I'm out of here. Until the next one.